so I have an iP iPad 7th generation here uh, with what looks like a bad charge port. Um, you know, it's weird, but uh, after all these iterations of the iPad, I can't believe that Apple still hasn't fixed this charge port yet. The design of the charge port, that is. And basically what happens is that these two screws right here, um, they hold this little metal bracket in place, which hold, which is held in place by two screws. Um, the charge port is held in place by two screws to the frame. But what happens is that these two screws, for some for some reason, kind of backs out a little bit. So this little metal bracket here wiggles, um, wiggles a lot, which cause usually causes like a like a breakage in this flex right here. You can if you look closely with a microscope, you can see like a crack, oftentimes. But I actually don't see it on this one. So I'm just guessing that it's a bad, it's a bad um, charge port. But uh, with my TriStar tester here, it says, and I'll show you what it says. You're going to have to look at it upside down, but I'm going to do a quick test here, and it's going to say failed. So, oh, now it says okay. So, <laughs> I don't know. Oh, I guess maybe if I wiggle it, then it's fine. See, now it's, now it's, now it's fine, which I don't really understand. Anyways, I'm going to let this go through and see what it says. Meanwhile, I have this thing right here. It's kind of jacked up. All right, so it looks like it passed it actually this time, but my guess is that maybe the flex is. I mean, I looked inside the port and I didn't see any damaged pins or anything like that. So my guess is that it is still a bad. Port. But let me do this real quick. I'm doing multiple things here. So you got it. Okay. Anyways, um, yeah, I don't know. I mean, okay. Let's look inside this port and see if we see anything weird here. Yeah, see, I don't really see anything weird with this, but. You know what, I'm going to plug it into a charging cable and see if it charges. I mean, it was definitely intermittent charging earlier. See, if I kind of wiggle it, then it kind of goes sometimes. Anyways, I'm just going to go ahead and replace it. Because that is the easiest thing to do, I believe. Okay, so um, when disassembling the iPad, I always use... Um, I mean, it's just a handful of screws, but I always use isopropyl alcohol for the adhesive because sometimes it's glued pretty pretty uh, tightly. Um, in terms of uh, this right here, removing this thing, I just use heat and just blast it. Hey Google, turn smoke on. I'm going to put a glove on because uh, the heat, I use my tweezers and then the heat gets pretty hot. So I normally go pretty high heat. I'm at 450 degrees Celsius. Uh, I'm going to turn up the air, the um, airflow a little bit. I'm going to turn it to 40, 450 and 40, and I get pretty close to it. And you definitely want to, if there's like a, there used to be like a little um, plastic bracket on the other side of this. You definitely want to remove that, otherwise it just gets burnt to a crisp. So I just kind of blast it here, and then sometimes I put a little flux on it. So maybe I get a little more clearer. Okay. So I just blast it, wait for the solder to melt, and then I just lift up. So you can see my tip is pretty close to the uh, connector, to the pads. So it doesn't take too long for the solder to melt here. I mean the biggest thing is really you just want to pull any pads you know so you definitely want to use enough heat so that you're not pulling pads. Um, next thing I do is I just put a little flux on it. I use my tip here with some 
6337 solder on it and I just kind of run through it. Just be careful because sometimes the delicate pads will pull up along with it. So I, I tin it so make sure there's no oxidation on any of these pads. I leave the uh, flux on there. I'll get a new charge port. The seventh gen is different than the five six air air one. Yeah, uh, yeah. You used to be able to use that same charge port for all of them, even though the design is exactly the same. I don't really understand why. This, this looks like it's been already been used. It's kind of weird. Anyways, that might have been me who did that. So I'm not really sure. Whatever. If it works, it works. If it doesn't work, then I will. Raise some hell with mobile centrics. Okay, so let's see. Ah, sticky. Okay. Okay. Color effer. Let me take my damn glove off, man. This is. Don't need it now. So I normally just kind of tack on two ends, and then, and then I'll just go to town on them. I do do like two pads at a time, and I just kind of just make sure I push down on it and make sure that little circle, uh, you know, it doesn't show through, which means that the the pad and the um, the bottom pad are soldered correctly. So I just kind of push down, well, apply, apply some light pressure on top, and then just go like that with it. And I'll I'll usually do it twice, and that's usually sufficient. Make sure you use enough flux, otherwise uh, you're going to get a lot of bridging. Sounds like somebody's ringing my doorbell. Let me go check see who's at my doorbell. Hold on. Looks like the mailman, but I don't know why they ring my doorbell. It's weird. Um, this is my house, by the way. It's, I'm I'm at I'm at the office right now. <laughs> okay, uh, not that you guys cared, but I am not doing this out of my house. Um. Okay. So it looks like it's pretty good. Looks like it's pretty good. So I'll just take some isopropyl alcohol with a Q-tip and just kind of run it through it like this. Uh, make sure the holes don't show through. I'll do it with the other side as well. And then let's put this through the TriStar tester one more time and then let's see if hopefully we can just get it. Maybe I'll do it this way so you guys can see it a little better. All right, no finagling in it. Tested okay, so I'm actually not going to go through the whole thing. But I'm gonna, um, I'm actually gonna just hook it up to the iPad now and and put a lightning cable to it. Let's see. So I'm not gonna fully. I'm not. I'm not gonna put it back in yet. I'm just gonna 
plug a lightning cable up to it, look at my ammeter, and see see if I can. Yeah, there you go. So instantly now I get up to 2.2 amps. Before I had to like jiggle it a little bit in order to get up there. So this one's going. So I'm just gonna go ahead and reassemble this now, and uh, and then I'll test everything. But I'm assuming everything is good with it. Uh, looks like there's another flex cable here now. So I just need to make sure that this flex cable is up before I put everything back. Okay. And then sometimes you'll put everything back, and then like you realize that there's a cable stuck, and you're like, "What the hell, man? You gotta redo everything." I can't be the only one doing that, right? Alright, uh, let's see. Okay, so. <clears throat> Alright, so. Just put these two big screws at the bottom in. So the, the only thing you really want to check are the speakers. These are two sp speaker connectors, uh, and then the charging, just the amperage on the charging, just to make sure that the charge port is fine on it. All right, um, and then everything else, you know, you're not really mucking with. You just need to make sure that they're they're working. Basically, the connectors are connected properly. You know, sometimes you don't click it in properly, and it doesn't work. Just make sure everything's clicked in properly. Careful with these connectors; they break off. Okay, so let's see, let's put the screen back on and test it. Make sure you isolate the battery, otherwise you're gonna blow something. Okay. Anyways, I think that's supposed to be a, on top of it actually. So let's just do this. I'm actually not really sure, but whatever. I don't think it really matters that much. All right, put that put the battery screw back in, and we'll test everything. And then we'll put the rest of the screws in. All right, two amps. Apple logo. I mean, doesn't seem like there's much to this. Uh, same 
you know, the charge port up here is very similar to the other ones. It may, it may take just a uh, hair tech longer for the disassembly and reassembly. So basically I just go to sounds, oops, let's go to sound. And then check the charging, it's at 2.5 amps. And that's it really. So that's how you do the iPad 7th generation uh, charge port repair and testing and stuff like that just to make sure it is that. Uh, fairly straightforward. I didn't see a crack in it, but uh, still the charge port was bad, so I don't know. Alright, thanks for watching. I just wanted to say thank you for watching our YouTube channel. We make these videos to help you guys learn how to do micro soldering um, for normal repairs. Um, I want to take this time to promote our online course here. We created an online course hosted at Udemy.com. Um, if you go directly to Udemy, it's 150 bucks. If you go through microsoldering.com, click on store shop, and then click on this first uh, product right here there's a coupon code that uh, gives you fifty dollars off of our online course so our online course it was created by Tom and myself um, it contains four and a half to five hours of online video instruction um, it'll teach you everything that you need to know to get started with micro soldering so basically we um, we start with the basics you know just the component level, um, how to use ZXW tools, um, what kind of, how to set up your tools, what kind of tools you need, um, how to set up your hot air rework stations, um, use your micro pencil and tweezers and DC power supply and all that stuff. And then we go into actual repairs. So the four most common problems are no backlight, no touch, no charge, and loop disease. And with the newer versions of the iPhones, um, we also have a section on uh, logic board separation because with the 10 and up, uh, the logic boards come in two pieces. So we also have a section on how to separate them and put them back together. And then our last section is um, all about data recovery. So this is, it's, it's four and a half hours of just good stuff just to help you get started, okay? And with the way that cell phone repair is going these days, I think it's um, essential to learn how to do micro soldering for your business. Um, if you're interested, like I said, just go to the website here, microsoldering.com, and click on uh, store shop, and then click on this right here, and you'll get $50 off. So... Thank you for watching our channel and hopefully you'll enjoy the course. Thank you.